Hey everyone, Matt here. So it's been 15 days since we racked some of our traditional mead onto these raspberries here. And after 10 days, I did take a sample and taste it and it had a hint of, of raspberries in the smell and the taste and in the uh, aftertaste. Um, so I wanted to see what another five days would uh, do to that flavor. So here we are today on day 15 and we're going to um, rack it out of uh, this carboy into this one. And you'll see that this one's green, and you don't normally see green carboys like that. Usually you see clear ones like this. But I actually found these at my recycling depot, and I paid 40 cents for a bunch of these. And just for a comparison, this one here I bought used for $10. And if you were to buy a new one off of Amazon, it'd be about $20. So a bunch for 40 cents was a, a sweet deal. So for 13 of those days, I was stirring the carboy up to get the meat in contact with as much of the raspberries as they could to suck all those uh, flavors out of it. Um, and then, so on the 13th day, it was um, really cloudy and there was a lot of um, particulate in, in the solution there. And I wanna try and get as much of the mead out of here as possible. And so, what I did was I did two things, which I read about. Uh, one was uh, I could cold crash it, which means you put it into a, a, a fridge and bring the temperature down really fast, and then that would make everything uh, fall out of the solution and, and collect at the bottom like it has here. So I, I put it in my little mini fridge downstairs and brought it to uh, about one degree Celsius. And so it's, it's been in there for two days now and it's totally cleared up uh, at the top here. Another trick that I read about was putting a filter bag on the bottom of your auto siphon that would, you know, eliminate the bigger chunks getting transferred to the next carboy. And even if we do get a little bit of particulate in there, it's still gonna um, bulk age in there and all that sediment will, will drop out and then we'll rack off there again or, or rack it into uh, the final bottles or whatever. So um, if we do get a little bit in there, it's not the, the end of the world. And as always, everything that you see in here has been sanitized, all the equipment. Um, I actually did pre-sanitize all my bottles once I washed them. I leave a little bit of the uh, um, sanitized solution inside the bottles and cap them off and then it uh, doesn't let any of the bad things grow in there while they're in storage. But uh, one thing I do want to do before we rack it over is um, do another hydrometer test and uh, maybe get a little taste test going. So let's go do that. Okay, I got my uh, hydrometer there with my sample tube. So let's get this out of here. It's a bit sticky. Put that in the sanitizer. Ooh, it smells raspberry. Let's take a little bit of this. So it actually went up like three sugar points just with the raspberries being added. So let's uh, put this in. It smells more like raspberries. Ooh. More of a tart raspberry taste. Tastes good though. So let's get to racking this over here. So I'll just sanitize this top here and grab the racking cane. I always make a big mess with that. But you can see I got the uh, the filter bag on there just with some elastics. It's been sitting in the sanitizer. 
I always make a big mess. Oh, hopefully it fits in there. Ooh, just barely. Oh no. Oh, no way. Huh. <laughs> I guess that's something I should have checked is if the auto siphon fits in there. I wonder if it fits without the uh, bag on there. Let's see. Well, that is so disappointing. Why wouldn't I check that? Let's see without the bag. No. Well, we're going to have to. Uh, do it old school then. So what we'll do is we'll, um, I got the, the tube for my auto siphon full of sanitizing solution and we're gonna put it in there and then that'll start the siphon going and then we'll empty it into here until it starts getting the actual meat and then we'll put it into the uh, carboy there. So let's grab that. <laughs> so I don't know if this is gonna work. I've never tried it before. I've seen it. Man, I'm making a big mess. Anyway, well, let's try this. Let me just put that back there. Hmm. It just seems like too much of a waste to let that all just stay in there. So uh, I did put that filter bag on the end here. Maybe that'll help a little bit. But let's, well, we're all tangled up. Let's try this again. <laughs> Next time, we'll, when we add fruit, we'll do it in a three gallon so that we can use the auto siphon. Um, but it seems a, a, a shame to waste all that. Um, and I know they say you shouldn't pour it because you'll um, add more oxygen and stuff, but I think that oxygen Jason does to make it bad when you, when you store it for a long time. And I don't think this will be stored for that long. I plan on drinking it almost right away once it's done. But um, so I think I have like a a filter thing for jamming and I think I'll do that I'll pour a little bit more to get that in there and then uh, yeah like I said next time we'll totally do it in a, a bigger carboy so let's do that now I'll just go get that sanitized the funnel and stuff I see <laughs> okay let's give this a go so I got my funnel I got this little filtery thingy Let's see how much of a mess I can do now. That should be good. Of course, it's not gonna go well. to do so I finished that cleanup and uh, that is definitely not the way to do that we will find a better way to do that I think doing it in a bigger carboy uh, so you can use the auto siphon there with the filter on it but uh, once I put the uh, the airlock on it and gave it a little swirl you could see that it was releasing co2 again so it's it's under another blanket of co2 so it should be fine and it seems well, seems a little cloudy, but we'll rack it out again and uh, it'll clear up. But uh, it did turn out pretty good. 
So if you like this content, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and uh, thanks for watching.